Hello everyone, my name is Savannah Peterson, coming to you from the Cube Studios in Palo Alto, California. We're gonna be talking about supercomputing, an event coming up in Dallas this November. I'm joined by the infamous John Furrier. John, thank you for great, joining me great today. Great to see you, you look great. Th thank you, you know, I don't know if anyone's checked out the conference colors <laughs> for, for supercomputing, but I happen to match the accent pink and you are rocking their blue. I got the so, on, there it is. We don't always tie our fashion to the tech, ladies and gentlemen, but we're, we're a new crew here <laughs> at, at the Cube, and I think it should be a thing that we, that we do moving forward. So John, you're a veteran and I'm a newbie to supercomputing. It'll be my first time in Dallas. What can I expect? Um, basically, it's a hardware nerd fest, basically of the top <laughs> minds. So it's like CES. And it's like CES for like, like hardware. It's like really the coolest <laughs> show. If you're into like high performance computing, I mean, game changing kind of, you know, physics, the laws of physics and hardware, this is the show. I mean, this is like the confluence of, it's, it's really old. It started when I graduated college, uh, 1988. Uh, and back then it was servers. You know, mm -hmm. supercomputing was a concept. It was usually mm -hmm. a box and it was hardware, big machine, and it would crank out calculations, simulations. And, and you know, you were limited to the processor and all the, the systems right. components, system architecture, system software. I mean, it was technical. It was, mm -hmm. a, it was, it was hardware, it was fun. Um, very cool back then. But you know, servers got bigger and you got grid computing, you got clusters, and then it be really became high performance computing concept. But that's now multiple disciplines, hence it's been around for a while. It's evergreen in the sense it's always changing, attracting talent, students, mentors, scholarships is kind of big funding, and big companies are behind it. Hewlett Packard Enterprise, Dell Computing, startups, um, and hardware matters more than ever. You look at the cloud, mm. what Amazon and, and the cloud hyperscales, they're building the fastest chips uh, down at the root level. Hardware's back, and I, I think mean, this show is going to uh, show a lot of that. There isn't a cloud without hardware to support <laughs> it, so I think it's important that we're all headed here. You you touched on the evolution there from supercomputing in the beginning and complex calculations and processing to what we're now calling high performance computing. Can you go a little bit deeper? What is what does that mean? What does that cover? Well, high, high performance computing now is a range of different things. So the supercomputing used to be like a thing. Now you got clusters and grids. It's distributed. You got a backbone. It's well architected, and there's a lot involved. There's network and security. There's system software. So now it's multiple disciplines in high performance computing, and you can do a lot more. And now with cloud computing. Um, you can do simulations, say drug research or drug mm -hmm. testing. You, have, you can do all kinds of uh, genome uh, sequencing. I mean, the, the, the ability to actually use compute right now is so awesome. Um, the field's got, a, you know, it's rebooting itself in real time, you know, pun intended. So it's like really, it's really a good thing. More compute makes things go faster, especially with more data. So high performance it encapsulates mm -hmm. all the, the engineering behind it, mm -hmm. um, a lot of, robotics coming in the future. All this is gonna be about the edge. You're seeing a lot more hardware making noise around things that are new use cases. You know, your Apple Watch, that's, you know, very high functionality to a cell tower, cars. Uh, again, high performance computing hits all these new use cases. It, yeah, it absolutely does. I mean, high performance computing touches pretty much every aspect of our lives in some capacity at this point, and including how we drive our cars to, to get to the studio here in Palo Alto. Do you think that we're entering an era when all of this is about to scale exponentially versus some of the linear growth that we've seen in the space due to the frustration of some of us in the hardware world the last five to yeah. 10 years? Well, it's a good question. I think everyone has has seen Moore's law, right? So they've seen every, mm -hmm. you know, that's been been well documented. I think the world's changing. You're starting to see the trend of more hardware that's specialized, like DPUs are now out there. You got GPUs. Mm -hmm. You're seeing the um, you know bolt-on uh, hardware accelerators. You got shim layer software abstraction. So essentially, it's it's a software industry that's in impacted the hardware. So hardware really is software too. And there's a lot more software in there. Again, system software is a lot different. So it's, I think it's, it's boomeranging back up. I think there's an inflection point because if you look at cybersecurity and physical devices, they all kind of play in this world where they need compute at the edge. Edge mm -hmm. is going to be a big use case. You can see Dell Technologies there. Um, I think they have a really big opportunity to sell more hardware. H Hewlett Packard Enterprise, others. These are old school Intel, box player. companies. Yeah. So I think the distributed nature of cloud and hybrid and multi-cloud coming uh, on Earth and in space means 
a lot more high performance computing will be sold and, and implemented. So that's my take on it. I just think I'm very bullish on the space. Ah, yes. And you know me, I get really personally excited about the edge. So I can't <laughs> wait to see what's in store. Thinking about the variety of vendors and companies, I know we see some of the biggest players in the space. Who are you most excited to see in Dallas coming up in November? You know, HP, you look back on enterprise has always been informally HP, huge on HPC, Dell and HPE. This is their bread and butter. They've been making servers from mini computers to Intel based servers now to ARM based servers and, and building their own stuff. So you're going to start to see a lot more of those players kind of transforming. We're seeing both Dell and HPE transforming. And you're going to see a lot of chip companies there. I'm sure you're going to see a lot more younger talent. Mm -hmm. um, a, lot, a lot of young talent are coming. Like I said, robotics and the new physical world we're living in is software and IP connected. So it's not like the old school uh, operational technology systems. You have you know, IP enabled devices that opens up all kinds of new challenges around security, vulnerabilities, and also capability. So it's, I think it's gonna be a lot younger crowd, I think, than we usually see this year. And you're seeing a lot of students and again, universities participating. Yeah, I noticed that they have a student competition that's a, a big part of the event. I'm curious when you say younger, are you expecting to see new startups and some interesting players in the space that maybe we haven't heard of before? I think we might see more use cases that are different. When I say younger, I don't mean so much on the demographic, but young, younger, I, new ideas, right? So I think you're gonna see a lot of smart people coming in that might not have the you know the the lens from when it started in 1988. Remember 1988 to now, so much has changed. In fact, we just did a, seg a segment on the cube called "Does Hardware Matter?" Because for many many years over the past decades, like hardware doesn't matter. It's all about the cloud, and we're not a box company. Boxes are coming back, so you know that's going to be music to, for for into the ears of Dell Technologies and HPE of the world. But like hardware does matter, and this you're starting to see that here. So I think you'll see a lot a younger thinking, a little bit different thinking. You're going to start to see more conf confluence of like machine learning. You're going to see security. And again, I mentioned space. These are areas where you're starting to see where hardware and high performance is going to be part of all the new systems. And so it's just going to be industrial to uh, IoT is going to be a big part too. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, was, I was thinking about some of these use cases. I don't know if you heard about the new drones they're sending up into hurricanes, but it takes literally what, a, what an edge use case, how durable it has to be, and the rapid processing that yeah. has to happen as a result of the software. So many exciting things we could dive down the rabbit hole with. What can folks expect to see here on the Cube during supercomputing? Well, we're going to talk to a lot of the leaders on the Cube uh, from this community. Um, mostly from the practitioner side, expert side. We're going to have, we're going to hear from Dell um, Technologies, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and a lot of other executives who are investing. We want to find out what they're investing in, how it ties into the cloud, because the cloud has become a great environment for multi cloud with more grid like capability. And what's the future? Where's the hardware going? What's the evolution of the components? How is it being designed? And then how does it fit into the overall software open source market that's booming right now uh, that cloud technology has been doing? So I wanna, we want to try to connect the dots on the cube. Great, so we have a very easy task ahead of us. Hopefully everyone will enjoy the content <laughs> and the guests that we, <laughs> we bring to, to our table here from, from the show floor. When we think about, um, do you think there's going to be any trends that we've seen in the past that might not be there? Has anything phased out of the supercomputing world? You're someone who's been around this game for a while. You know, that's a good question. I think the game is still the same, but the players might shift a little bit. So for example, a lot more um, with the supply chain challenges, you might see that impact. We're going to watch that very closely to find out yes, what components that. are going to be in what. But I'm thinking more about system architecture because the use case is interesting. You know, I was talking to Dell folks about this. You know, they have standard machines, but then they have use cases for how do you put the equivalent of a data center next to say a mobile cell tower? Mm -hmm. um, because now you have the capability for wireless and 5G. You got to put the data center like speed, functionality and capacity for computers at these edges in a smaller form factor. How do you do that? How do you handle all the IO? That's going to be all these, all these things are nerd, again, nerdy conversations, but they're going to be very relevant. So I like the new use cases of power, more compute in places that they've never been before. So I think that to me is where the exciting part is like, okay, who's got the, who's really got the real deal going on here? That's going to be the fun part. 
I think it allows for a, a new era in innovation. And I don't say that lightly, but when we can put processing power literally anywhere, it certainly thrills the minds of hardware nerds like me. My, I'm OG hardware. I know you are too. I won't reveal your roots, but I got my my start in, in hardware product design back in the day. So yeah. I can't wait to well, see Well, then more. you know you know hardware when you talk about processing power and memory. You can never have enough compute and memory. It's like, it's like the internet, bandwidth. You can never have enough bandwidth. Bandwidth. Right. Network, power. And compute, power, you know, bring it on, you know. As Even battery life, simple things like that when it comes yeah. to hardware, especially yeah. when we're talking about being on the edge. Yeah. It's just like our cell phones. Our cell phones are an edge device. We well, you, when you combine device. cloud, on-premises, hybrid, mm -hmm. and then multi-cloud and edge, you now have the ability to get compute at capabilities that were never fathomed in the past. And right. most of the creativity is limited to the hardware capability. And now that's going to be unleashed, I think, a lot of creativity. So that's again, back to the use cases. And yes. again, you're going to start to see more industrial stuff come out, mm -hmm. uh, edge, and I, I, I love the edge. I think this is a great use case for the edge. Me too, uh, absolutely. So bold claim, I don't know if you're ready to, to draw a line in the sand. Are we on the precipice of a hardware renaissance? Definitely, no doubt about it. When we when we did the Does Hardware Matter segment, it was really kind of to test, you know, everyone's talking about the cloud, but cloud also runs hardware. If you look at what AWS is doing, for instance, all the innovation, it's at robotics, it's at the, at the mm -hmm. physical level, pro, pro, you know, you got physics. I mean, they're working on so low level engineering and the speed difference, I think from a workload standpoint, whoever can get the best out of the physics and the materials will have a winning formula because you can have a lot more processing, specialized processors. That's a new system architecture. And so to me, the, high, the HPC, high process computing, fits perfectly into that construct because now you got more power so that software can be more capable. And I think that at the end of the day, nobody wants to write an app on a workload to run on, on bad hardware and not have enough compute. Amen to that. On that note, John, how can people get in touch with you and us here on the show in anticipation of supercomputing? Of course, hit the cube handle at the cube at Furrier, my last name, F U R R I E R. And of course, my DMs are always open for <laughs> scoops and story ideas. And uh, go to siliconangle.com and thecube.net. Fantastic, John. I look forward to joining you in Dallas, and thank you for being here with me today. And thank you all for joining us for this supercomputing preview. My name is Savannah Peterson, and we're here on the Cube live, well, not live, pre-recorded from Palo Alto, and look forward to seeing you for some high-performance computing excitement soon.